Boys and girls, it's time to talk about guitar amps again. Yes, we're gonna check out some tube amps today. And just look at those beauties here. Today we're gonna check out two of the most sexy looking guitar amps I have ever seen. We're gonna check out two amps from MLC amplifiers from Poland. They are both coming from the Sub-Zero line. It's the Sub-Zero 93 and the Sub-Zero X. Uh, they have been here for a while, so I had the time to check them out. And today I want to compare those two amps with my studio reference, which is the Brunetti XL Extra Lead. So let me show you some very unique and interesting sounding high gain guitar amps. Let's have some chugga chugga fun. All right, let's talk about our signal path. First, as usual, I'm playing my good old Fernandez Ravel baritone guitar with EMG pickups. We're basically playing the 81 here because we're basically doing chuga chuga with it. Uh, nice sounding guitar, you've heard it before. And I'm going into my KHE amp distribution system so I can switch between the three amps. We got the Brunetti Extra Lead and the two MLC amps. And of course, as usual on this channel, we're using a real cab with a real microphone. So we're going over there behind that window into my live room where we have a Mesa Boogie 4x12 oversized cab connected. It is loaded not with the stock vintage 30s, it's loaded with DV77s from Eminence, you know, my favorite speaker, come on. Uh, my favorite speaker, the Eminence DV77. Check it out. If you like what you're hearing, check it out. Get a DV77, or if you can't find one, get my official Eminence Digital DV77 IR pack, which sounds wonderful. Get that IR pack, link below. Make me rich and famous. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we're playing a DV77 and we're miking it up with a single SM57. Pretty standard setup and it sounds cool. But have a look at those two beauties over here. They look totally different, but equally beautiful. I, I really love the look of those amps and also like everything feels super solid and super, super expensive and nice and boutique. I, I really, really love those amps. And just look at this. Those are real spikes. It doesn't get more metal than that. Let me quickly introduce the amps. I don't want to say too much about the specs because you know, you can look that up on the MLC homepage. Uh, in this video, I want to show you the stuff that you cannot look up. I want to show you the sound. I want to talk about the characteristics of the different uh, amps and their distortion. So up here, we got the Sub-Zero 93, which is the signature model of the Dimu Borgir guitarist called Silenos, I think. I don't know his real name. And yeah, it looks fucking metal. I love big amps with like one set of knobs and EQs. It just looks amazing. You can switch between two, two modes here, but you basically have one channel and it's the same concept on both amps as you can see. Down, uh, this is I think a 100 watt model with 6L6 tubes, but who cares. Down here we got the Sub-Zero X, which looks totally different, but also very beautiful with also all those little X's and that black and white look. There's also a cabinet that looks the same, really cool. And I can already tell you that those amps have similarities, but they're voiced quite differently from each other. They're really, they're really different. And that makes it, that makes it so interesting. So I want to start with the Brunetti Extra Lead, which is a great sounding middle of the road high gain amp. And it sounds like this. <laughs> We're going straight into the amp. We're not using a boost. I mean, this amp, I could turn on the tube screamer, which, which makes it sound a little tighter. But for the sake of just comparing the amps, I'll leave the tube screamer turned off. So let's start with the Sub-Zero X. All the knobs are at 12 o'clock, more or less right now, except for the master volume. And there's a reason for this, but let's have a listen. <laughs> And the reason for those settings, of course, it's not enough gain, but the reason is that you can already hear the character of this amp. You can hear the character of the distortion because this is a highly percussive sounding amp with a lot of attack. Like... 
and some sort of twangy character. So I feel like no matter how much gain you add, it always stays very dynamic. It's not a highly compressed amplifier. All right, so let's start tweaking. So we got two switches down here. This one says FTBK. I don't know what it is. Sounds like a boost. I'll have it on. And this one yeah, is a bright switch. Let's put it to bright. Let's crank the gain. And another thing that makes this distortion pretty special is the note separation. Which is really, really good. So this is just a highly precise tool. And one thing that is special on all the MLC amps that I've tried, and I don't know why, is the EQ. Because it's so extreme. I don't know if it's a normal passive design or if it sits somewhere else in the distortion. It's very extreme. It's just different to your typical, whatever, Marshall passive EQ or something. Just have a listen. This is the mid knob. Super extreme. But you really gotta play with the EQs to get enough gain going for a modern metal sound. So let's do that now. Do you hear what I mean? We still have that percussive. Highly dynamic behavior in the distortion. If we go back to the Brunetti, you will hear that the Brunetti sounds way more compressed. Of course, that's thicker. But, you know, it's not that twangy, it's not that direct, like the MLC Sub-Zero X. You can go from... to something like this. And let's talk about note separation one more time with a chord like this. And let's repeat that here. Now you understand what I mean, right? All right, so this is a great example for an amplifier with a unique distortion character. It's not a gain monster, as you can hear. And it's interesting because the way the bass frequencies distort reminds me of a Marshall. Yeah, and maybe this is based on a Marshall design. I don't know, I haven't asked him. It's a, just a cool combination of the precision, the attack and the dynamic behavior and the lack of compression. But the overall distortion doesn't sound super modern. It sounds a little more British Marshall JZM 800-ish or something. Nice combination, very unique amp. I would recommend it to people who really wanna have a super precise, transparent tone with a lot of attack. It might be interesting to check out this amp with an eight string guitar for gent tones, so like boosting it a little bit and just get that, 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 you know, that super dynamic precision here. Very interesting amp, not your typical modern high gain amp, but I'm sure a lot of you guys will love it. So let's move on to the next amp. This is the Sub-Zero 93, and I've already dialed in my favorite setting and it sounds like this. And 
you can already tell this sounds quite a bit different. So it has way more gain, first of all. So. More than you will ever need. So that is one difference. And overall, it just sounds a lot thicker and warmer and less twangy and less dynamic compared to the Sub-Zero X and also more modern, which is maybe not what you expect from a Dimu Borgir signature amp, but it sounds beautiful. <laughs> And in this setting, it sounds rather mid forward. You can see this is a setting that I hardly use in any other amp. So the mids are almost fully boosted on this one. And once again, you can change the spectral behavior with this EQ in a very extreme way. <laughs> Now it's more black metal. If you crank the treble, it gets really extreme. It almost sounds broken. That mid knob is so powerful. From Super Scoop 90s. So something really tonal. If you want to make it a little more brutal, you got to crank the presence. Which adds quite a lot of attack. So this amp has a beautiful voice. And uh, yeah, Timo Borger, I don't know. It just sounds thick and beautiful. Lots of gain, uh, lots of very like expensive sounding, you know, vocal mids, really, really nice, but brutal and tight enough, especially if you crank the presence. For anything modern metal, really cool. It has an inbuilt gate, which is already turned on. Which works great, if you ask me, it can be turned off on the back. I have it turned on now because it just works. Uh, for me, it's quite easy to dial in and I really love those those knobs here. And uh, there's nothing bad I can say about it. Just a thick sounding, nice sounding vocal amp. Maybe a little less special in its voicing compared to the Sub-Zero X, which is, yeah, a little more traditional, but with that percussive character, it's a little more special. But of course, then again, it's more niche, maybe. The Sub-Zero 93 is maybe more of a typical modern high-gain amp for everybody. And overall, I think the 93 would be a little more versatile. I mean, you just have one setting, but in the studio, you can go from very scoop to something mid-forward, to something attacky, to something rather dark. So uh, I really enjoy playing those amps. And once again, they're just so fucking pretty. <laughs> and I like pretty, pretty, pretty evil sounding things. Pretty evil sounding things. That could be something for the thumbnail of this video, right? And these amps seem to be a good match to the DV77 as well. Thick sounding, nice sounding speaker. Get a DV77 from Eminence, link below, or get my IR pack, even better, another link below. But you know what? I also got two MLC cabinets here. I think the Sub-Zero X cabinet, and then another one, I don't know what it's called. They're both loaded with warehouse WGS speakers. I think the Retro 30 and the, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But if you want to see another video where I show you those two cabinets, I still got them here um, before they pick them up again, please let me know. Because these amps and these cabs have been here in the studio because I've been reamping the Dieth album, you know, with Dave Ellison and Guillermo 
Miranda, uh, we've been using those amps to reamp the guitars for their album. And that's why, uh, because Guillermo is an MLC artist and that's why they brought the amps here. Perfect chance for me to check out the amplifiers and to do a little video. I hope I could enlighten you a little bit. I hope I could explain the character of those different amps. I hope I could, uh, I hope you could find out which one would be the right one for you. Um, I think that's all for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to ring the bell, uh, the usual stuff, you know. If you wanna see more videos, let me know. And please leave a comment below, letting me know how you like those amps, uh, which one you prefer and why. And if you wanna see another MLC amps video where I show you the cabinets and um, what else you wanna tell me, I don't know. Maybe you wanna tell me something? If you feel better after that, feel free to do so. I'm trying to answer all the comments as usual. Um, that's all for today. Yeah, check out my IR pack if you like those uh, uh, DV77 sounds. Uh, check out my Academy Cola Audio Cult, very important. If you wanna learn something about mixing, mastering, and no, recording, mixing, and mastering heavy, all kinds of heavy music. We got like lots of courses there where I teach you uh, cool shit. And um, thanks a lot to MLC Amps for sending me those amps. And uh, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm gonna keep one or not. Which one should I keep? You let me know. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.